Denise, tell us about your bird. Um, which is a, a little budgie that um, we were asked to take after somebody else had saved her. She was being attacked by wild birds in a park, we were told. So Denise, you and found her about six or seven weeks ago. Yes. And when you found this little, very energetic, very full of life, very zesty bird, you noticed there was a problem. What was the problem you noticed? Um, she had a spot on one side of her neck that was crusty and was obviously itchy and she was, yeah, it was annoying her. And obviously having a, obviously worrying about her welfare and concern, what did you do? What did you try and treat her with? I, I bought some mite spray and um, and I sprayed her um, every two weeks and I was taking her cage outside and scrubbing it down and spraying it with the mite spray. Um, um, so I've done that three times in the last six or seven weeks. So just to make a comment, budgies do get a mite called Nemodocoptes, which is a scaly face mite. And essentially the mite and last spray doesn't treat it but it usually for, forms lesions on the beak occasionally on the feet so it wouldn't be a neck lesion but generally people um, will possibly having the best intentions give a mite and last spray to almost every single bird that gets found or seen that comes to our clinic has had a mite and last spray if it's feeling sick if it's down if it's wings sore if it's beak sore that's kind of the go-to for everyone because they but it's, it's a misconception Remember that wild birds that are flying around have got mites on them and lice and they don't have feather damage, they don't have neck lesions, they generally don't have problems with it. It's a symbiosis, most birds can live well with it. For some of you that are philosophical, you actually think maybe if you put mites or lice at very low numbers on birds, maybe it would even help them. But just to let you know, it's very unlikely to be the cause, but it may be. If it was Nemotocoptes, which is the mite that budgies get, you can't treat it with mites and lice spray because it's a burrowing mite that lives inside the tissue. And you would need something like, you might have heard of, we sell a product here called Moxidectin or SCAT is a, is a product that we use and you put one drop on a bird and that would treat the burrowing mite. So has this little bird been a good pet? Yeah. Has yeah, she, she's, she's fun, she's healthy, she's chirpy, she mimics a couple of whistle tunes that we make. So another, another thing you've got to be careful, so owners will generally come in and say their birds are healthy, but this bird's got like lots of things on its neck and stuff. So it probably isn't as healthy as we know, but we don't have, we don't have the understanding of birds that we have with dogs and cats. Denise has got a dog and she, you know, people are much more aware of it. We're not aware mm -hmm. of birds that potentially there can be big issues. So I'll try now. The interesting thing is this little bird was found being attacked by magpies. Mm -hmm. Now, magpies are just doing what magpies do. Magpies, they insectivore type animal. They carnivorous. They're omnivorous, but they do like meat and they're going to kill the budgie and eat it. And that's what they do. So it's miraculous that it's safe, but I'm pretty sure we're going to have pecks on the head because that's how they do it. And they get infected. And uh, this, little baby, this little bird's been scratching and biting and scratching and biting. We'll try and look at the lesions. I'll try and show you on the picture as best I can. But the worst, the worst one's going to be here. So you can actually. Um... And that has really only got to that point in the last seven to ten days, I think. So it, lo it looks to me. I mean, it's very hard to be a hundred percent, but I, I think it looks like um, it might just be a wound that's just really out of control now. Yep. Yeah. She's been scratching and biting. I mean, other things because we don't know the age of the bird, it can be. It could be a tumor. You know, we've got a big, big red. We've got kind of a big red swollen lump, but we're generally going to go with the most common thing that would be. So it was attacked by magpies, we've got wounds all over. I mean, just take a look at the rest of the head. So you might need a picture then, Mel. Another concept that people don't really know is that a dog and a bird are the same. They get the same disease, the same things. So what we do if you had a big red lump on your dog, big swollen lump by the ear, well, in this particular case, because it's kind of big, we'd like to anaesthetize. We're actually trying to remove it potentially because it's a big infected lump. Clean the area, sterilize the area, and get the pet on antibiotics, possibly painkillers, and possibly something topical or that you can rub on that area. And again, whether it's a dog or a cat, as you many people watching this, you'd send it off to a lab and you'd know exactly what it is. Because the lab's going to tell us definitively that we do histopathology, they cut and do it. But as many of you are watching, birds often don't get that luxury. For if, if we had a dog or a cat, we can do it approximately maybe 80 to 90% of the time. In birds, it's probably closer to 5 or 10%. 
and it's obvious. I mean, birds are cheaper pets, and uh, it costs. You know, we charge on two hundred and ten dollars, which is an absolute fortune. That's just the pathology fee, and the lab charges us about one fifty. So it's you've got to just know that there's um no easy answers. But that's how we'll discuss what the owner wants to do with it. But either way, we're going to try and get this bird better. Well, there's a mass here. So is the mass, you know, what is this traumatic mass here? Is it, um... It's hard, you know, what are we dealing with? So I don't have a choice. I'm going to take this mass off right now, really quickly. It's really bothering the bird. I just hope we don't get bleeding. And if we do get bleeding, we we'll need a stitch to really if it bleeds. So sometimes we do things at almost no charge just to um, Absolutely beautiful. So you can see, I should be wearing gloves, but you can see the mass has come off beautifully. So we could send it off if the owner wants us to. And now we can actually, the owner can clean. We don't have this big mass in the way of everything. And now we'll start it on some medication. You can wake, so you can wake it up. Right, so I'm turning oxygen right up. Can I just get a little bit of, um, maybe F10 gel, we'll just rub a little bit on. F10 gel. We got the F10. I'll spray it. Oh, don't think we've got F10. That's all be the same. That comes from the front. We just spray it with a bit of F10 spray. You can see it's waking up beautifully. Yeah, we got some fluids for it. Okay, okay. So let's. So you can see when you get up to do that, you can sometimes do stuff really quickly. Do you guys like the hairstyle? We'd like you to comment. What, what do you think of the hairstyle here? Yeah? I like it. Wow, look at the head. So this head was really, this bird's really been through the, really been through the wars. Those evil magpies bashed it up good. So I think hopefully we, you know, once we get this onto antibiotics and some things, we should be okay. So thanks, Katie. Good anesthetic. Right. We use an L1, which is a radiosurgical unit. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty new. Um, we bought it last century and it still works perfectly. It's over Loving 20. the sarcasm, Phil. <laughs> Loving the sarcasm. <laughs> Very new. If, if something works, it works. Um, <laughs> and having health and assistance with good anesthesia makes this procedure disease easy. No? It is, isn't it? It's not neurological proper recovery. symptoms. Yeah. This is a really bad head injury. It's I'm running around a little bit better now, which is nice. We are stargazing a little bit, so things aren't quite right. Mel, I should have told me I could see it before I actually put out the cage when I was watching it in the cage. 